so hello friends welcome to my new video so today in this video i'm going to dis discuss with you all about a very important topic that you all should know so i'm talking about ossn so what is ossn so ossn the full form is ocular surface squamous neoplasia okay so let's start so this ossn here you can see this ossn is a board term that defines the neoplasm of the cornea that means OSSN is a wide spectrum of disease that indicate the abnormal growth of dysplastic cell over the ocular surface. So it mostly resembles the conditions like pinguicula, pterygium or conjunctival cyst. So here the OSSN term was first uh, described by uh, Von Graffi. So here this OSSN is mainly two type uh, histopathologically. So it is conjunctival intraepithelial neoplasm and squamous cell carcinoma. So this conjunctival intraepithelial neoplasm is a non-invasive nature carcinoma where the basement membrane remain unaffected and the cell growth and cell scar uh, to the substantia propria. So it is the most common tumor of the ocular surface and the cells are in pre-malignant stage. So this conjunctival intraepithelial neoplasm or in the short form I can say CIN is mostly benign in nature and remain in the ocular surface and it also grow over the cornea. Okay, so that is conjunctival intraepithelial neoplasm. Now, what about the squamous cell carcinoma? So squamous cell carcinoma or SCC is the in stage of the disease of uh, that is I'm telling about OSSN. So it is seen that African population are more affected by OSSN as they are more sun exposed and the incidence of HIV in those population is more to other uh, uh, continent people. Okay, So this SCC or squamous cell carcinoma is invasive in nature and it can invade the uh, ocular structure and spread to the other part of the eye leading to serious vision loss. But it is seen that the squamous cell carcinoma rarely spread over the ocular part uh, or other part of the body. So patients with OSSN recover very well if they are given appropriate or proper management. Now, these are the classification of OSSN. Um, so this is according to the Lee and Hist, OSSN is classified as three types, benign, pre-invasive and invasive OSSN. So here, Another researcher, Jacobic, uh, classified conjunctival intraepithelial neoplasm or CIN. So I'm talking about CIN, not SCC. So CIN is classified uh, more in uh, three uh, parts, mild, moderate, severe, depending on the severity of the lesion. So here, mild lesion were those that involve the basal one third of the conjunctiva. Those involving the inner two-third were classified as moderate and uh, the lesion that were full thickness were termed as severe uh, dysplasia. Okay, So here these are the etiology of OSSN. So here first etiology is it can be due to infection by human papilloma virus. Prolonged sun exposure can lead to formation of OSSN, HIV infection, previous injury to the eye hypopigmented hair and iris as well as smoking, vitamin A deficiency and failure of DNA formation if the person is having xeroderma pigmentosa. So uh, it is also seen that the darker skin people are who are more uh, re residing in near the equator and more prone to have OSSN. So it is more common in older males. So in a research conducted by Lee and Hist, it was found that OSSN is more seen in people who are age is in between 56 years or more than that okay so there is the etiology now let's go to the pathophysiology of ossn so here first of all in my last video uh, of pterygium i mentioned that pterygium is mostly seen in nasal uh, uh, ocular area right similar to this case ossn is mostly seen in nasal area but it's not that much uh, uh, hard and fast rule that OSSN is only present in nasal. It can present in temporal side also. But most of the cases it is seen in nasal uh, limbus area where nasal limbus is more exposed to UVB and effect to the uh, this UVB exposure lead to effect to the limbal stem cells and basal cell get affected by that and 
the dead basal cell uh, become uh, mutant and carcinomatous and it spread towards the ocular surface so later it can invade the ocular structure in severe form if it is not treated properly and there is damage to the dna also okay so that is the pathophysiology of oss and so i am telling about the pathophysiology based on stem cell theory okay now what the patient will complain in case of oss and so if the patient come to your clinic then what he will say he will first of all say a presence of fleshy mass over the uh, uh, eye so this fleshy mass can be anything pterygium pinguicula oss and it can be anything so clinically you need to differentiate what the case is now excessive in, uh, irritation redness for in body sensation reduced visual acuity and itching so irritation because of the irritation of that mass lesion redness it can be red and for in body sensation reduced visual acuity when ossn is over uh, over the cornea it can lead to unwanted astigmatism that can lead to vision a problem or itching so if it is uh, ir more irritant then the patient will more prone to have itching sensation okay so here uh you can see this picture so here ossn this is a picture of ossn where you can see it is cl uh, clinically appear as gray white lesion uh with irregular borders with presence of feeder vessels and if you stain this lesion with rose bengal then it will be stain positive okay so it is the case of ossn so here only by looking at this picture you cannot differentiate that whether it is a uh, cin or scc so for that you need to send the patient for histopathology okay so here it can penetrate the uh, ocular structure or it cannot penetrate the ocular structure so for that uh, another uh, investigation that is present that i will uh, come in the later slide so here you can see that these are the morphological classification of ossn so here ossn morphologically three type papillomatous leucoplakic and gelatinous type so papillomatous ossn are mostly benign in nature and it is more seen in pediatric patient and this papillomatous are non invasive leucoplakic are in pre invasive stage and gelatinous so gelatinous ossn are appear in a two form nodular and diffuse so here it can spread the uh, uh, spread over the cornea also so this is gelatinous okay now history taking so in history taking what are those things that you need to ask to the patient first of all age is very important symptoms what are the symptoms that i will i told in the in my previous slide exposure to sun so here you can ask to the patient about the occupation so family history of cancer age history of hiv history of previous eye injury history of previous eye transplant surgery happen or not history of human papilloma virus all these things you can ask to the patient so because uh, these things are the risk factor of developing ossn so here i want to tell you that if the person is not having any uh, hiv infection eye injury any uh, eye transplant or hpv uh, infection and he is only exposed to sun most of the cases those patient are more prone to have pterygium but along with more sun exposure if the person is having any systemic uh, uh, disease or he is more uh, habit of smoking then those person can lead to ossn formation so that's why quit smoking as soon as possible to get out from this risk okay now so this is the corneal ossn so here uh, i told you about the gelatinous type so it is one type of gelatinous corneal ossn so here corneal ossn are uh, in the in the stage of pre invasive stage so here the surface is translucent opalescent and grass glass appearance so margins are you can see the sharply defined and corneal ossn are avascular and it is due to spread of abnormal cell from the nearby affected limbus area so corneal ossn are stationary and these are slow growing in nature okay so let's come to this thing so let's go to the basics of conjunctival intraepithelial neoplasm and squamous cell carcinoma so this picture clearly tell you that how the cell uh, uh, go unwanted or abnormal mutation unwanted cell division and that lead to abnormal production of dysplastic cell over the ocular surface so here uh, this is the normal uh, cell structure of the eye 
so this is the cin 1 2 3 cin is uh, only up to that part where the basement membrane is not invaded okay so in a case of ossn the limbal stems first get damaged and from the uh, from there cancer starts spreading so until the mutated carcinomatous cell invade the basement membrane it is called as conjunctival intraepithelial neoplasm and when the uh, when uh, this lesion invade the basement membrane then it is called as squamous cell carcinoma so you can see that there is an invasion of this cell that is known as squamous cell carcinoma but up to this it is known as cin that is conjunctival intraepithelial neoplasm so the difference between the conjunctival intraepithelial uh, neoplasm is uh, from the uh, squamous cell carcinoma is cin is not invasive and squamous cell carcinoma is invasive so cin or conjunctival intraepithelial neoplasm can be treated by topical uh, chemotherapy but uh, squamous cell carcinoma need surgical management as well as topical both okay so wherever you get a patient of suspected ossn then do send the patient for histopathology to rule out that whether it is a case of CIN or SCC. So you can also send the patient for ASOCT to know the invasion of the mass lesion in the eye to understand the depth of the lesion. Now, how to diagnose by using special dyes. So here you can see that the patient is uh, stained with rose bengal. So there is a rose bengal stain. So you know this very well. What is the use of fluorescein dye, rose bengal and lysamine green? So fluorescein dye is used to stain the living cell. Rose bengal stain is used to stain the dead cells. So if you see that there is a mass lesion growth and you are suspecting that the patient is may, may have OSSN, do stain the patient with rose bengal and see whether the stain is positive or not. So how to see? After you stain the patient with rose bengal, put the red free filter not the cobalt blue you need to put the red free filter and see whether it is taking stain or not if it is stain positive then it can be a suspected case of rose bengal but most of the time rose bengal stain also give quite, uh, some kind of uh, false reading so for that there is another dye that is used in ophthalmic uh, ophthalmology to diagnose whether the patient is having OSN or ocular surface abnormal lesion. So that is known as toludin blue stain. So toludin blue is an acidophilic metachromic high density dye and the OSN lesion having less intracellular adhesion. So this toludin blue gets sta uh, uh, stain those cells very easily. And clinical in clinical practice, you will use toludin blue of 0.05%. Toludin blue is used uh, to rule out any kind of side effect to the eye also. So here after staining the patient with toludin blue, you can see that it is staining with staining positive. So that is indicating uh, abnormal cell growth or carcinomatous changes. So here also you can see this is a kind of squamous cell carcinoma case where uh, you can see that gelatinous uh, lesion growth and this is the presence of feeder vessels okay so it is stained with stain positive with toludin blue okay now let's go to this slide so here asoct so figure a shows the presence of ossn in a papilliform manner figure b we can see the hyper reflective epithelium with disrupt attachment in the basement membrane. Figure C and D are after treatment of the same eye where you can see that the complete resolution of OSSN from the ocular surface. So this is the uh, before treatment condition this is the after treatment condition of the same patient same eye. So here if you give proper management to the patient then OSSN can resolve. Okay, now management. In management, there is three way to treat OSSN. First, topical therapy. I told you earlier also, CIN can be treated with topical therapy. 
so there is two kind uh, two way to correct it whether you will use mitomycin c or 5 fluorouracil so mitomycin c is very effective uh, choice of medication in primary and recurrence case of ossn so the usual dose of mmc is 0.02% to 0.04% four times per day for one week followed by one week daily uh, one one week drug holiday so three cycles are recommended with a maximum of eight cycles if you are using mitomycin c so mmc or mitomycin c induce apoptosis and necrosis to and it produce cell death 5 fluorouracil there is also you, uh, you can use mitomycin as well as 5 fluorouracil uh, so but don't use this thing at a same time you will use mitomycin or 5 fluorouracil so 5 fluorouracil prevent dna and rna synthesis and this is how it produce the cell uh, growth now if i tell you about the interferon alpha 2v so this is immunosuppressive agent that after you use uh, this uh, interferon alpha 2v it bind with cancer cell and it produce some uh, mechanism that inhibit the cancer cell to uh, grow so this is how you will treat by using interferon alpha 2v now surgical excision and cryotherapy Surgical excision means surgically you are uh, cutting off the lesion from the eye. And, and remember this thing, once the surgeon will cut off the uh, lesion from the eye, uh, topical therapy should be started there to reduce any type of recurrence of the tumor cell. And cryotherapy is done after surgical excision of the lesion to destroy the residual tumor cells of the uh, limbus. Cryotherapy act by reducing the temperature and ischemic necrosis of the cell. The recommended duration for cryotherapy is 3 seconds in every single application. So here you can see that slit limb photo. It is a slit limb photo of OSSN before and after MMC treatment. So here is the papillomatous change of the OSSN you can see. So uh, after giving the mitomycin C. The patient is fully recovered from that and this is the surgical excision of this OSSN where no touch treatment is there where you will place the uh, cut 3 mm away from the lesion and cut off the lesion away from the eye and place the uh, amniotic membrane and start chemotherapy topical management here that you can start mitomycin or 5 fluorouracil depending on your choice so that's all friends thanks for watching please don't forget to like my video subscribe to my channel i hope this video helped you a little bit to understand more about ossn thank you so much